Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Okay, how you going? Phil Tarrant, uh, host of the Smart Property Investment Show. Hope you're well. Smack bang in 2024, it's all happening. We've probably already done about 10 podcasts uh, this year and you see the themes starting to develop um, uh, for the year ahead. And one thing that people like doing at the start of any calendar year normally and what happens at financial is what's this year hold and you read the papers and you see what's going on and 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 those trends are coming out i think uh, the first point i would make is that we're, we're, we're largely at the top of this interest rate cycle whether or not there will be one more who knows some economists are pricing it in but i think now most aren't pricing it in uh, number two um this time last year a lot of people were thinking there would be a recession on the cards i think a lot of economists now are now Pricing in the fact there won't be uh, a recession. Um, some of that driven by uh, some of the, the the macro factors shaping Australia right now by way of immigration. Who knows how much that's going to curtail it? But it would appear that um, uh, a recession won't be happening. That said, I think it's still going to be quite subdued growth um, uh, for the period ahead. There's still a lot of challenges and frustrations. Anything happens globally now. There's always ramifications for inflation in Australia. Um, we see what's happening in the Middle East uh, in the war. Um, uh, between Hamas and uh, Israel, you see there's threats to shipping um, off uh, the, the the coast of the Middle East right now, and all these things sort of pulls back into economic forecasts of saying this is what it means, this is what's going to happen. So get used to that for 2024. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to tell you all the reasons why you probably shouldn't be investing in property because of all these things you can't control. You just need to understand, and appreciate, set your strategy, set your path, uh, and go about investing sensibly in a sustained and rigorous way, and a lot of people will be having experts on the shoulder for their help, mortgage brokers, financial planners, buyers, agents, accountants, all these people you should be chatting to to make sure you get the right outcome. Even your bookkeeper, uh, I actually, for part of my uh, portfolio, I actually have people that just do that bit on, on some of the stuff connected with property, so I don't have to do it, and they're a huge enabler for me to think strategically, knowing that uh, I'm covering all of those things. And there is a bit of a connection with that because one of our guests in the studio today is a bookkeeper. Bookkeepers are cool. Um, the, the unsung heroes of the accounting world. Uh, and, and for those of you who who don't know here at Momentum Media, we're very big in accounting. Uh, we have big sort of media platforms and events around accounting. So we know accounting pretty well. A lot of people say that the accountants and I also extended that to the bookkeepers were the doctors and nurses for Australian business during the COVID pandemic. And, and we talk about that as if it was yesterday. It was actually four years ago uh, is when Australia started to get the grips of what the COVID pandemic was going to look like. And I remember this time four years ago going, uh, you're still laughing at people eating a bat and chopsticks, right, on a Facebook memes. And then the reality of what happened um, took place. So these four years ago, and there's still the impacts around it. And a lot of the economic climate today is still determined and dictated uh, by that. But what does that mean for investors? Well, it means you should be ensuring that you've got the best mortgages possible to suit your investment strategy today and into the future. If you haven't looked at your uh, interest rates, you haven't done a refinance recently, speak to your mortgage broker. Uh, we speak to lots of brokers on this show, um, but you've got to get your mortgages right. There are properties, however, and types of asset classes which are producing better cash flow yields than, than others. And we're going to be chatting a little bit about that uh, today. Uh, for someone that... Um, uh, so his sort of expertise is, is largely around that, which expends it out also. He's back in the show. He's going to have a chat with us. That's Dragon Domovsky. He's from Buyers Agency Australia. He's the director there. And he's brought in a guest uh, with him. Um, I'll call him Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and Phil's a bookkeeper. Phil, how are you going? Well, thanks, Phil. And Dragon, how are you going, mate? Very well. Thank You're you back. very much. I'm You're back. back. Thank you for having me. Now, I got some feedback from the last time we got together, and mm -hmm. it said it was all very good, by the way. Oh, um, thank and you. they said that you... Um, uh, we're, we're very poised and eloquent, and maybe I should take some tips from you around it. But they also said that um, does Dragon only do sort of more alternative types of of asset, which we're going to sort of talk a little bit about today. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about duplexes and boarding houses and rooming houses and stuff like that. But I think there was a bit of a misconception. Maybe I did that somehow that says you only do that stuff, but you also you you you, you buy and support clients with more run-of-the-mill meat and potato type investment properties, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Your three and four bedrooms, uh, standalone homes, uh, single dwelling, um, you know, that, that sort of generate anything from 6 7%, you know, valuation around that uh, starting point, about 400000 and up. So, yeah. Okay, so yeah. you do do that stuff as well? Uh, as well. But, but right. you've got a particular bent around um, uh, identifying, sourcing, locating, 
uh, properties which maybe have better yielding sort of Correct. alternative That's type right. assets, and, yep. and a rooming house would be one yep. of them. Yep. Uh, right. Which I like talking about uh, these type of um, uh, investments because um, the, the the cash flow, the yield component of it is is different. It's a different outcome. However, it comes with its own challenges, challenges mm-hmm. uh, and nuances. Yes. Um, and from what I understand, you've bought filling because Phil acquired some of these properties through you. So we can actually Correct. get the strategy and the science behind it, but we can get the real world um, uh, case study on what it is to own something like a boarding house. I'm going to start there. Mm-hmm. Boarding houses. What's a, what, sorry, a rooming house. Rooming mm-hmm. house, boarding house, same thing. Uh, Different. It, kind of. It, okay. it's, look, uh, rooming... Let, let's get our lexicon right. Rooming house. What's so, a rooming, so house? rooming house is pretty much uh, separate rooms rented out individually. Okay. Okay. Which is, yes, similar to a boarding house, but uh, I guess there's less legalities to to the actual property. So um, boarding house, I, look, it's pretty much the same. Mm. Okay. Um, it's, sorry, I'm going to screw up something. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone blank for a second. No, no, sorry, no, guys. no worries. It's all good. Um, let's just cut that bit out and start again. Yeah, cut that bit out. So look, rooming house, you, you can actually get uh, each property individually uh, rented out and put on into a, a you know a six month or a twelve month lease. So yeah, okay. So uh, so rooming house is a bit more of a formal way for. Uh, I've spent some time in share houses over the years, so mm-hmm. sort of same but different. So it's more structurally um, connected Correct. in that you have a lease against the Correct. room That's rather right. than someone has a head lease and exactly. lets it out to their, exactly. their idiot mates yep. so they don't pay the rent. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So so everyone's accountable and responsible for. Correct contributing to their own room, own which room. is connected to a lease, and a property manager would manage, would manage all, that, that, all, all of them. them individually, correct. Okay. And yep. and is there some sort of – so so they would let it out to be like, hey, do you need a room in a particular place? Um, and you would apply for it. Uh, yep. And no doubt pretty popular these days no, considering that, the way rents yeah, are. Yeah, they would advertise it uh, you know, on, on realestate.com, domain.com, and people come in open home. They would show the room and uh, yeah, and then lease it out, sign a contract. And do they line the other tenants up, tenants up saying they do? A, they do. They and do. say, this is going to be living with. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, really? Yep. yep. But okay. what they try to do, they marry up uh, with the personality. So they're not going to put you know, someone in, uh, you know, who's who's a doctor with students. Okay. So they will actually marry up uh, the right individuals with, uh, you know, with uh, whoever's staying in that other room. I'm, I'm happy you brought that up because, you know, I, I sort of frame <clears throat> it as being a student or a, or a young professional living in a, mm-hmm. a shared house, which I've done um, uh, in different parts of the world, and it's quite good fun. Uh, um, but that's just one side of this. You might be a student, you might be a young professional, This, but this might be, medical professions Correct. who travel for the purpose of yep. their jobs and they yep. might be in a particular regional area for a period of time um, at a regular cadence so they would, they would keep a room in a rooming house. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. How, how common is this? It's common. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. But, yeah. but again, it depends on the area as well. Mm. So if, if you're smack bang between, uh, you know, uh, hospitals and universities, then yeah, um, I personally have, uh, you know, people in, in you know, um, pilots who fly in and fly out. Um, who have a, a permanent room for them. Yeah. So that's another really good aspect. I've got a mate of mine that flies for Qantas. He does, I think he's doing Mildura or Albury or something. Like mm-hmm. that. But it's a permanent thing for a period of yeah. time. So yeah, yeah. so he would take a room. So we'd yep. go to the same, rather than go to a hotel, he'd go, he's only there three days a week for an that's overnight. Right. And then yep. he'd get, okay. It works out cheaper for him as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So do corporates sort of sponsor that stuff as well? Or is it normally some do. they get a stipend and they just work it out themselves and do a deal? Some, that some yeah. Some yeah. would actually sponsor some, you know, they're just individuals. And what's the sort of rotation on that? Like six or twelve months leases. Six or twelve months, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do property managers like it? They probably do. They charge. They charge more a little manage? additional, yeah. Definitely okay. do. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. Phil will get into the details. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to give a sense for structurally what this is. Mm. This, so it could be three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedrooms. Uh, That's correct. Yeah. So you, yeah, three, four bedrooms. Usually th- uh, four bedrooms plus. You get a better return from four bed, four bedders up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and new builds, old builds. New Whatever. old, look, yeah. they have to be livable. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good point. Yeah. And you need to have locks on the doors. And... Individual locks, uh, furnished. Yeah. Yeah. And do you normally right. try and get a en suites and stuff or do you share bathrooms or it depends? So it depends. If one en suite, if, if there's a bedroom with an en suite, you'll obviously get a better return, mm. a, a better rent on that. But then, you know, the other two or three bedrooms would share a, the outside Okay, and, and then you let the natural dynamics take place around – you know, Phil gets this shelf in the fridge and, you Correct. know, Dragon yep. gets this shelf in the fridge. So they just operates. It, it, you don't over-orchestrate it all. No, yet. that's right. You yeah. hope that adults are sensible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. You would hope so. You would hope so. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's, I remember last time we caught up, I remember sort of just tweaked it because because I've looked at these things myself in the past and and often, and maybe it's probably more of this boarding house sort of concept, often um, uh, you might, might, maybe it's a, a bias from from where I grew up, but often people that lived in, in um, uh, rooming houses, boarding houses were probably in a boarding house or rooming house because they couldn't get anywhere else mm -hmm. to go into. And I'm yep. sort of trying to be quite sensitive how I frame that. Yep. Um, but there is actually a, a structural mechanical sort of elevation to this, which is professionals use this as a way to keep their keep, keep their houses or, or live, right? So Correct. it's not like yep. the bottom bo bottom end of no. the socioeconomically. No. Yep. It's, it's all in sundry. And that's right. Yep. And and, and it's all, has it always been here? This is a relatively new No, it's, it's, it's been around. It's yeah. just becoming more more popular now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so in any given suburb, like, would there be a lot of the in the right type of location? If it's close, let's say Westmead, for example, which mm -hmm. is uh, you have big university precinct, big hospital mm -hmm. precinct. Yep. You would have a lot of these type of assets there, would you? Uh, correct. Uh, yeah. um, obviously, you need to check the council regulations of what's required per mm. uh, per suburb or per you know. Uh, per property, but yeah, you would definitely. Yeah, so yeah. there is there is regulations around there is, this. There yeah. is there are there are, and then there are some areas that just there's no regulation. Okay, you just you know go for it. It's a free for all. Free is for it? all. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So 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 question is why why would you consider this type of and I sort of touched on it beforehand, but mm -hmm. why would you consider this type of this setup or this type of investment? Uh, type is it because it, it yields better? The the higher rental yield, especially you know in today's you know uh, people are, are coming to me with uh, six point five, seven point five, seven percent uh, interest rates, and they're asking, well, how can we you know how can we get a property with a with a good investment that has a great return um, that's still going to be positive or neutrally geared? So I give them the option of the rooming house. Okay, yeah. all right, and are, are they easy to find? Are they listed as rooming houses? No. You buy it as such, no, or no. do you convert? You convert. Okay. Yep. So that's probably a, a skill in itself is to identify the right locations that Correct. you can convert without right. spending a lot of money. Yep. Yep. Okay. And without going through the council as well. And without going through the council as yep. well. Okay. So that's so, probably your specialization right. to, to work it out. Okay. <laughs> that's right. It all becomes clear. Yep. It all becomes clear. Oh, welcome back. Phil Tarrant from uh, Smart Product Investment. I hope you're well having a chat. With Dragon Domovsky from Buyers Agent Australia, talking about rooming houses, um, and I also want to talk about duplex and sort of multi-tenanted uh, assets. But um, I'm stuck on this this rooming house. I like the idea of it. See, well, I always thought Dragon that you, you bought it as such, um, which I, no doubt you can do, mm -hmm. um, yep. or you find the right type of asset and convert into it. So two different things. Would would, would often you see a thing saying, "Hey, um, rooming house for sale, no. intentional investors." No, they just don't get listed like that. No, they don't. No. They don't. And why is that? Just uh, no idea, to be honest. No idea. No idea. I mean, the, I, I have seen them mm. um, when they have been set up that way. Uh, then they will market it that way. But you usually get um, properties like that that are in council regulated areas that have had um, the conversions done to the property. Mm. Okay, and then they'll sell it that way. Uh, the selling point being a high rental yield, but that comes with a price as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so you pay a premium for you it. You pay a premium. Yeah. So, so I guess the point being is that if you go down this pathway, you get to to manufacture the upside as a saleable asset yeah, if exactly. you go and configure it this way. Yep. So it probably comes down then to understanding the council regulations. Do, do councils? I'm sorry for peppering you. A no, lot that's of okay. It's really interesting. Um, do, do, are, are councils supportive of these type of assets? Uh, some councils are. Yeah, mm. they're, they're definitely supportive. But but again, you you, you know there there are certain regulations, uh, certain costs to set up, and also certain council fees that need to come into play. Okay. Yeah. So so what do you look for when you try and find an an, an asset that you can convert into this type of setup? So. Um, one would I imagine you start with the location as in, mm -hmm. is there a need for it? Yep. And then what does the place look like? So let's start. Yep. How do you work out whether there's a need for it? Uh, contact the property management. Uh, it, um, start again, sorry. Contact property managers uh, within the area, real estate agents, and find out, is there a need for it? You know, something that's between a, an airport, a major university, maybe a couple of universities in the area, uh, uh, high demand in in student or you know uh, rooming style individual properties so so yeah and also what i always look for is particular councils who have they have this demand but do not require the council 
uh, regulations on that particular property. So what that means is <clears throat> I come in, I purchase property for a client, we you know put locks in the room and we don't need to actually uh, get the uh, the uh, sorry the councils to come in and say okay well we're going to tick all these boxes for 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 that to you know become a rooming house okay yeah so a property that is three bedroom or four bedroom the maximum requirement is say uh, you know four people in one dwelling in one property and that is the requirement and so that is anything requirement. more than that then you know yeah yeah can't okay be done. so 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 it's best to work with the council around meeting their obligations and regulations because I know that helps with insurance and all that sort of, of course, stuff. But yeah. some, but 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 every council, every local council would have a different view towards of course, this. Yes, uh, and and the point around whether or not um, councils would in, encourage this, I, I would say it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in that, for for those locations where you have maybe a, it's a quasi transient, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, workforce, mm -hmm. uh, which which might not permanently live there, but they need accommodation mm -hmm. you know, rather than fill up in hot hotels and stuff. Yep. But um, uh, it means that individuals probably aren't taking the leases on larger properties that they don't need all the assets, uh, that all the rooms in there, and therefore um, uh, you get a greater density and you're making housing more affordable for more affordable. I, I, I can see the point yep. uh, there. So um, so so by way of record, say you want four bedrooms, two baths, or four bedrooms, three baths would be mm -hmm. good, um, quite livable, no doubt, yep. open areas, a number of different sort of loungy room type yep. stuff, like yep. stuff which gives people flexibility. So so um, requirements being you you have a lock on every door. Yep, definitely. What what else do you need? So you need to furnish the place. So yep. you need obviously the uh, the beds, the, the um, white goods, uh, electronics, furniture, the lounge. That's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. So you hit up uh, Freedom or Fantastic Furniture or something like that. Exactly. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Which Phil is experienced. He'll tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, yeah. So Phil. So what what attracts you to this type of asset? I'd say the um, return is probably the best. Okay. Yeah. So so let's talk specifically about. The, the the property that you have that you you sort of source through buyers agency, Australia. Where, where is it? Um, Southeast Queensland. Okay. Where, whereabouts is Southeast Queensland? Can you give me some of it? Well, no. Give me. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be cagey. All right. Southeast Queensland. All right. So somewhere between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. That's fine. Close to a university, about eight hundred meters. So it's a short walk for any students to to go there. Okay. Um, I initially approached Dragon saying this is what I'm ready to purchase. How did you find Dragon? Podcasts. Okay. There yeah. you go. That's handy. <laughs> Podcast with a uh, free 45-minute interview. Yeah. Um, had a chat with Dragon with my with my wife and um, hit it off pretty well personality-wise. And um, yeah. There you are. So you said, I want one of these. Well, first off, this is my second house I bought through Dragon. Okay. All right. So I bought one with my wife um, also in Southeast Queensland just as a five-bedroom house. Okay. And it was set up as a dual key. Okay. So different to duplex. Dual key was... Um, one side of the house is four bedrooms, two bath. Other side was one bedroom, one bath. Was it something that configured into that or was it built for that? It was that? built for that purpose. Okay. So there's a wall that goes through the double garage, yep. straight through the house to the to the back fence. So okay. one house uses the main entrance, so the four bedroom house, and the other other house would use a side entrance. Okay. And and the point being, you could either rent them out separately or you could have a family and an elderly parent or all this sort of stuff. There's yeah. a whole bunch of different ways. So I've got them rented out um, separately and yeah. I'm getting much better return. Than I would if it was rented as a whole house. Yeah, um, and so this is it's not a duplex; it's a dual key dual property. Key. So it's one set of rates. Yeah, um, just a regular house on the street, single drive, you know, single driveway into a double garage. But there's just two families living in the one dwelling. Yeah, uh, and and this is sort of quite popular up in in Queensland, and it has been for some time. And um, you know, there, there's always this discussion around how many of these do you build in any given suburb. Um, uh, However, I know people who have invested in this, and 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 the thing is, it looks like a five bedroom house. You wouldn't probably necessarily know unless there's a different access. But there is requirements around um, getting this stuff through council in that yeah, you know, it's all fire rated and mm -hmm. those sort of things. So um, you 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 bought this uh, it was, as it was an established built building as a dual key. Okay, and um, in the street that we purchased, um, having driven around it, we noticed probably about three or four other houses with the same same layout. Yeah. Okay. And and it's been good. Performing property. It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. And you've always had it tenanted both sides? Any tenanted both gaps? sides. I'm going through a tenant change at the moment. Okay. Um, so the four bedroom house um, has just been vacated and the tenants who are in the one bedroom are outgrowing it. So okay. it gave them first choice and they're moving into the four bedroom. Oh, that's pretty cool. So they get to move right next door. And there's no issues. It's just like living in a apartment, I guess. You've got neighbours next door and yeah. that's about the extent of it. 
Yeah. So has there been any major issues with, with this sort of dual key property? Uh, not at all, really. No. Um, the only thing I did make a change to was the water meters out the front. Okay. So it was a single water meter for the whole dwelling. Which means you have to pay for all the water. So I paid for all the water. Yep. And then I um, recently had an upgrade and had um, two meters put on. Okay. So you need to pay the service fee for the two waters, but the tenant pays for the water correct. usage, correct? Yep. So in the original lease uh, agreements, there was no, um, I couldn't get any claim back on the water, but now I, I can because they're separate meters for each okay. dwelling. What did that cost you to do? About a thousand dollars. Okay, but the rental, the return on that over the time is well worth the expense. Yeah, and that was pretty straightforward thing for some plumber the, to come and do the it. The agent organised it, yeah, so okay. it was done around the time that the meters were meant to be um, checked. Okay, and it's like cool. While you're checking it, might as well throw two water meters in. Yeah, yeah. So surprising they didn't do it at this sort of point of construction, right? So it's got different electricity meters. Yes. It, okay, different electricity didn't have so different gas. Uh, uh, no gas. No gas. No okay. Gas. Um, and they're trying to get rid of gas at the moment, I think. They're trying to get everyone to sort of I love cooking with gas. I know. <laughs> you get used to sort of cooking after gas, but um, induction uh, cooking. Okay, cool. So so that's a set and forget. Is it positive a year, that property? It is. Yeah. yeah what did you, you pay for it? Um, that one I paid about six twenty five. Okay. What sort of rent are you getting on it? I'm getting eight fifteen a week. Okay. Um, combined two, so I'm getting about 6.7% return. It's not bad. Mm. How much debt do you have on it? 80% or did you buy it at 80%? 80% debt? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how's it performed sort of, how long have you had it for? Uh, almost 12 months now. Okay. And it's sort of done well in terms of capital value uplift. You had it revalued recently? I've had it revalued recently, but that's yeah. due to be done by 30 June. Okay. No, yeah. cool. So all in all, headache free? Headache free. Yeah. So that one was purchased with just my wife and I. Yeah. The second purchase we did was um, with my brother. Okay. Um, through a family trust. And that's the rooming That's, that's the, the rooming, rooming house. house. Okay. So my brother and I unfortunately lost um, both parents in the last few years. Mm, sorry. Um, yeah. And as a result, um, I guess generational wealth is being handed around with the change of um, yeah. the, the economy, succession. economy, the economy yeah. at the moment, <laughs> yeah. the baby boomers. Yeah. Um, so they had a, a commercial property. Okay. And that was inherited by my brother and I. We moved Inside it. of a family trust. We, we yeah. actually, that was separate. It was in a um, self-managed super fund. Okay. So we moved it from the super fund into a family trust yep. with the purpose to then grow the trust for the for the, for our family. Okay. And you're doing that in, in conjunction with your brother? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. And um, then I spoke to my brother about Dragon and yeah. what we can do. And it's like, cool, let's um, let's invest. Yeah. Okay. So so you go into as much detail as you like, but so, so rather than um, with, with passing your parents, rather than sort of carving up an asset, you decided to retain it, move it into a vehicle where where you would both benefit from the upsides of it, but a better, better a nucleus for for the wealth creation. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. pretty good. Was that a was that a putting the emotional process <laughs> aside for, uh, from a, a functional financial process, was it relatively easy mechanism to do that? And, it was, and was there sort of tax complication? It was quite easy. It? Um, yeah. it actually came down to having a, a nice lunch with my accountant yep. and my mortgage broker. Okay. And just sitting back and watching them talk. And they went, yeah, we can sort this out. <laughs> Absolutely. So you obviously get on with your brother. Yes. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Makes uh, a difference. So, so, so you will create wealth now in external to that, but sort of in, in collaboration well, we got, with We've them. got the commercial property yeah. and then we purchased a duplex as well, also yeah. in Southeast Queensland okay. through, through Dragon and that will grow. And then as it grows, we'll, um, we'll look at further investment in that, in that vehicle as well. Okay. That's cool. And, and have you sort of, is it like a handshake thing or is it like you've got it all agreements? If this happens, if this happens, if this happens. It's all done through the solicitors. <laughs> okay. That's all right. That's yep. good. Yeah. Yep. And do you talk with your brother about money more now as a result of this? It's Absolutely. like, yeah. We do. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So you sort of got a, a common connected interest now. Yeah. Other than just being brothers. Yes. Yeah. Being the bookkeeper, I run the books for the organization. That's handy. Um, I, I do the books of his business as well and mine. Yeah. Does he pay you? <laughs> No, it's good love. Bull, 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 love. Uh, big charge. <laughs> yeah. He's um, he does work for me with other other things. Okay, so yeah. he's got his own business. It's a good in, contra um, barter agreement. Yes. Yeah, I, I love it. That's the way it should work. <laughs> Certainly, the way it works. So, so you've so the rooming house sits. So, so, so the rooming house sits inside the trust. It does. Okay. Um. And how long have you had the rooming house for? Um, a few months, months now. Yeah, yeah, settled yeah. probably. August. Oh, in mm. August. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, coming up with six months or so. Mm. Was and, and was this a easy asset to find, Dragon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. tracked it down. You knew what you're looking for. You knew exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. The one came. It was. It was actually a nice little buy because it's uh, a duplex on a corner block. 
each uh, each one facing the opposite side. Okay. Uh, well, sorry, on it on a separate street. So which uh, which looks great. And it's, yeah. it wasn't too old. I think it was about eight years, eight years old. About seven years old. Seven years yeah. old. Yeah. So how many bedrooms in each duplex of the rooming? Each yeah. each each house has three bedrooms. Okay. Um, and two bathrooms. So you rent out and double garage. So you got six each. bedrooms for rent. Six bedrooms, four bathrooms, two double garages. Okay. And do people fight over the garage? Like, do you rent? Do you get a car spot as part of the? Uh, you can pay extra yeah. and actually get uh, garage space if you got to, if you want to park your car in the garage. It might be an extra ten, twenty dollars per week. Yeah. Okay. Um, otherwise, if they don't, want, no one wants to use the gar um, garages. I can rent it um, separately as storage to neighbours in the area. Okay. Well, you thought about this, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see your spreadsheet that, uh, what, 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 do you, what software do you use to manage uh, uh, your your uh, your trust? I use Intuit QuickBooks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of my go-tos. What do you go-to? Is, is it work well for that purpose of like managing property and stuff? Like Absolutely. Intuit? It's probably yeah. the easiest ones I find to use. Really? Yeah. yeah. I sort of, you know, I mentioned beforehand, I'm, I'm doing a lot more sort of my bookkeeping around my property stuff has always been a bit sort of, uh, mechanical with Excel <laughs> spreadsheets. So, Don't know, knock Excel. Somewhere. No, it it's good well for that, a time, that, that, but then occasionally you need to. It, it um, gets to a point where you need to um, yeah. uh, 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 elevate your uh, sophistication a little bit. But um, Excel doesn't have bank feeds. No, no, it doesn't have bank feeds. Okay, I, I just want to keep keep on this. Uh, we'll just sorry, stay with us, everyone. It's really interesting stuff. It's, it's a bit different than what we normally uh, chat about in that it's it's a different way to, to view uh, investments, but it's very tactical and, and this is good. Uh, welcome back, uh, Phil Tarrant for Smart Property Investment. Um, having a chat around rooming house. I, I like the duplex. Duplex is, oh, sorry, not a duplex, a um, uh, dual key property. That's pretty good, meat, potato stuff. And I know a lot of people have done that. Uh, and a lot of people hold it in their super funds as well, those sort Maybe. of assets, um, <laughs> uh, which are pretty good yielding. But I'm intrigued by the rooming house. So the, the rooming house is a duplex. Yes. It's a three three bedroom. So two titles or one title? Uh, one title. One title. Yeah, so it's one title. Mm -hmm. um, so built by the person you bought it off? The No. No. So no. It's, it's, so it, was, it was built, uh, someone has held it for about, from memory, two years, and then someone else purchased and then sold it off five years later. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like gold dust, a rooming house, duplex, six bedrooms. Uh, sorry, how much you pay again for it? That one I paid 805. Uh, 805. Grand in South is it? Which is, you know, it's good. Well, it's two houses really. It, it so it's is, what you yeah. bought two houses mm -hmm. with adjoining wall. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I guess unlike a dual key property, it would be different requirements around how that setup is around sort of fire ratings and meters and all that sort of thing. It is a it is it's a, a, it's a proper duplex. It's a proper That's duplex. Right. So yeah, yeah, three bedroom, two bathroom, one uh, lock up garage, and one and identical two stories. No, one, oh, story. one story. One okay. story. Yeah. So it's on a big block then. It's on a big block. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got a duplex in, in Queensland. It does pretty mm. well. It's That's better. Great. I should really turn it into a rooming thing, but uh, there you go. It's a bit older talk though. To me, talk to me after the show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got three people in each, fully tenanted. Yes. How much do they pay each? Uh, the ensuite bathrooms. Yeah. Uh, pay two forty. Two forty per week. Yeah. Okay. And then the single rooms are paying one ninety to two hundred. Two forty. I'm going to call two hundred. So that's easy with maths, right? So you're just six forty per place, yeah. right? A week. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. 80. What's your yield? You must have in front of you. That's pretty good. About 8.4%. 1280 bucks a week on an $805 purchase price. Yeah. So it's not costing you anything to hold this, despite the fact that mortgages is where they're at right now. What does your Intuit QuickBook quick say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in debt for a while, yeah, but it's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's going to come down pretty quickly. It, it should do. Yeah. So it would come down quicker if it was rented as a whole house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you pumping all of that money into the mortgages, the, the sort of cash flow into it? Like, is it is it is it washing its face at where it, where it is right now? Is it, sorry, is it is it how much is it costing you to hold this annually? The property. Uh, don't know. Yet. Don't know yet. No, okay, you've got to work it out, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's only a couple of months old. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, there was the setup cost to set up as a rooming house. Yeah. So as uh, Dragon mentioned, yeah, it was um, setting up the white goods. Yeah. Um, so white goods, TV, couches. Um, then you've also got, you walk into your own kitchen and work out what is in my kitchen? What do I need? Mm. So it's, it was a trip to Kmart with, um, about, about three shopping trolleys yeah. of plates, cutlery, crockery, microwave, ironing Exactly boards. the same on both sides. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I, um, one side became available, um, with the tenant, um, and their lease. So I drove up from Canberra to, um, East South East Queensland. With a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah. uh empty car at the time. Yeah. Okay. 
um, two and a half thousand kilometer round trip. So I set up the first house, got yeah. to the area and basically got to, you know, Harvey Norman or the good guys and went, cool, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. This is what I need. What have you got now? Yeah. Not yeah. what's in two weeks, not <laughs> delivery in four weeks. What have you got that I can get delivered tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Um, and some of the shops are very, very helpful. Yeah, but they, well, you can also like I've used appliances and I'm not plug for them. But appliances online and get you everything you need the next day. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty good. Just like boom, yeah, and it's great. there. It's, it works really well. So, so this is quite a significant capital expense that you've had to put into yeah, it. Yeah, it was right, about seven to seven and a half thousand per unit. Okay, and that that's fully kitted out. So, um, washer, dryer, plates, cutlery cooking, all the cooking stuff in your fridge. Um, pretty much everything that you lounge, put in your own house. Yeah. Um, yeah. Double, yeah. the double beds in each room, side tables. We don't do pillows and sheets. So that's that's for the individuals to look after themselves. Mm. I've got to mention, Phil decided to actually go up and do it himself. So. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> there, nice is, there is the option of the property managers to do all this for you. So, so property managers will do this stuff? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. What, yeah. what do they charge you to do it? Uh, the, uh, ridiculously small fee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But... They, but they you get, know, it they might get cost, the management. Yeah, they get yeah. the management, but then, you know, obviously they, they might cost a little bit more. Um, going up there might save you a little bit more money if you do it yourself. Yeah, because yeah. then you get a haggle for it. And so, exactly. so it's pretty similar furniture and like they're nearly the same? Pretty much the same. Yeah. Same fridges, same washers, um, same couches, TVs. Yeah. Okay. Has anything broken yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Still looking good. <laughs> and, Took a photo of everything before I left. Yeah, that, that's, that's and it's in pretty good nick, right? So it's yeah, eight, it's all, eight years all, old, everything's so. all new. Yeah, okay. And and the tenants that you have in there now, so two different properties. Um, so it's actually got two rooming houses, not not the one, but I guess you call it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Sounds like a really good buy, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, what are the tenants like? Are they pretty good? They just, are they, are they students, are they? They're students. Okay. So there's a university within a yeah. short walking distance. Um, from the, I haven't met the students, of course. Yeah. Probably but, best not meeting but, the but, but students. But the agent does give you the- I'm a bit short on the dough today. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the agent does always give you a short list to, yeah. to, to review their, their resumes and their applications. Yeah. And they're all getting on. They're not fighting. They're not getting so drunk far, every so night. So good. Happy no. with that. Um, being students, there are uh, rules and regulations, no, no late night parties and that sort of thing. Yeah. But the agents in the area are really helpful with the, with, um, the, right. whole, the whole management. And you've, you obviously had to also get internet put in? Yeah. So being a duplex, um, yeah. I actually stayed there. On, a, on one of the nights I was setting it up with, mm. um, with my son and just called Aussie Broadband, got an internet connection in one of the houses. And push it over into the next one. Absolutely. You drill a hole through the wall and put a... No, uh, just one of those um, repeaters. Okay. And it works fine. Works fine, yeah. yeah. So internet in both properties for one cost. Unlimited. 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 Internet, no problem. Yeah. 150 bucks. And that's included costs. in what they're paying for. So with the, with their rental, they're getting everything that's in the house, including okay. internet. Has, has the internet gone down and they're going, oh, the internet's down, can you come and fix it? Or is that something the property manager should be fixing, right? Now? Property uh, manager will fix it. I'm on yeah. very good terms with the management in the area. Yeah. So when I was up there, I, I met with him and um, he helped me to sort of put the furniture together. Okay. Well, uh, actually sat there with some Allen keys sort of. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Up. We're there for about, you know, two or three hours and That's just chin wagged for the whole time. Who, and, who, who, who was it? Who are you using up there? I'm using... Linked. Linked properties. Okay. Linked properties, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. And they specialize in this stuff, do they? I don't mind giving them a plug if they're good. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so so they do this elsewhere, right? This is not their only They do sort of uh, in the house. South East, yeah, yeah. 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 So, they, so they know the drill, this is what they yeah. specialize yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I've been dealing with them for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they give us a bit of a discount for our clients as well for okay. the property management uh, fee. And, uh, yeah, and they help with the setup as well. So, so can I sort of retrofit a, a, a property? So I, I mentioned I've got a... I've got a duplex in an area uh, very close to universities, the new mm -hmm. Sunshine, was it Sunshine Coast Union, yep. whatever it's called? Yep. Um, three beds, one bath, single story, probably about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So I could retrofit that into being a... Possibly, yeah. Like, yeah. Possibly, definitely. It depends on the area. It depends mm -hmm. on the council. Yeah. Which, which Kalanga. Yeah. Kalanga. 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 Yeah. 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 Up yeah. north, uh, north of Brisbane. Mm -hmm. There's also the potential of your double garage, um, getting yeah. that out to being a bed sit and get an extra three, four hundred a week. I think they're trying to stop that stuff now, aren't they? There's just, uh, there's a, oh no, there was um, uh, what did I read the other day, black market sort of rentals of you know people mm -hmm. who don't manage through a buyer's uh, through a property manager is all yeah. a bit sort of a bit dodgy at the moment. Okay, I, I, I like it. So, so you went down this pathway because you just like the sound of it. Absolutely. Yeah, no regrets so far. Not at all. Okay. What about when some student goes through the wall on a big night out? It's just, you know, insurance is for. So, so I wanted to ask you about insurance. So, is is the insurance requirements different because of of of, of 
structuring it this way or is it still just insured? Slightly, it's slightly, slightly different. So you got you disclosed the insurance course, saying I'm yeah. using it as a rooming yeah, house. Yeah, using yeah. a rooming house. So, you know, you might pay a couple of uh, hundred dollars more a year for, you know, for it as a rooming house for uh, as a uh, investment property. Yeah. Um, you know, as uh, what do they call it? Not building insurance. Um, landlord, landlord insurance, insurance yeah. yeah, landlord insurance. So yeah, you got you got to disclose what you, uh, how you're using that property. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and I imagine yeah. it's a, a level of de risking then because well, yeah, you shouldn't really have a untenanted property mm. at the moment considering yep. that the, the the way. But the, there is you know in, vacancy rates are so low, but. Mm. If there was to be a vacancy, I guess it's de risked in that, you know, you might have one exactly. in three or out. So exactly. you're still generating income. Yeah, some yeah. income, which is great. Yeah. yeah. And and what about rules around um, someone doesn't pay their rent? It's they're, they're still protected by the same tenancy For sure. rules and yep. stuff. You can yep. only increase rent once a year. Yeah, exactly. Queensland. It's so all the same. All the same. It's all the same. It's all, all the same. same. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They've got bond. They've got the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm just conscious, uh, Dragon, that people are going to be, you know, and I tried to make the point that I didn't want to frame you as someone that just did this. Uh -huh. I reckon a lot of people are going to call, to call you up and go, I just want that. Just want that. <laughs> <laughs> and for what happened, so since the last show, that's yeah. exactly what's been yeah. happening. <laughs> get, me, get, me, get me what Phil got, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's, um, so you're going to do it again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so this will, you, you go down this pathway, do you reckon? Give maybe two yeah. or three years time or mm -hmm. even less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess there's an optionality in that um, you can sell it as a rooming house if you wanted to, if you wanted to, to, to <clears throat> sort of you know, push it on or, 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 or change your, your, in, your, your investment trial. You need to sell it for some reason. We just put it back to what it was, which is just a two, three bedroom sort and of. Find yeah, somebody to put all the furniture you just purchased. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah chuck it up on Gumtree, yeah. whatever, yeah. or Facebook Marketplace. If it doesn't work as a rooming house, you can always rent it as a whole, house as a whole, mm. but furnished. Yeah. So and people can actually, you know, rather than furnish their own houses. You can do that. And what would the difference be in rent? Say you're getting, what, it was 640 a week as a, thereabouts as a, a rooming house. What do you think? Probably four, about 480, 500. 480, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, so there is an upside. And does the bank value this stuff differently if it's a rooming house? Is it a positive or negative? They just look at the asset. Look, uh, the purchase is just as a normal house. Yeah. You know, so, you know, um, it, it, it depends what you tell them. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You know, uh, if you're purchasing it as just an investment as, as a duplex or a normal house, then mm. that's that's what it is. And and if you're to refinance, would they see it as a positive or negative? Or just they just look at it as an asset. As an asset. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, to to another mention with <clears throat> with Hills Duplex, you could pay a small fee, get the um, the title separate, and sell one side if you wanted to as well. So there's a benefit there, or increase the uh, the equity that way. Yeah. So this is sort of splitting it and having two titles. Exactly. So fifty nine A and a fifty nine B, yep. whatever it is. Exactly. Um, uh, have you considered that? You explored that? You're going to worry about it? Sort of. No. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. And and that's this is for long term holding. So yeah. the idea is holding well, your family trust, right? Trust with the kids. Mm. So it's a generational asset and yes. yeah. Or they might go to university in this area uh, <laughs> and they'll have a <laughs> they can they can run the rooming house, right? You know, yeah. where all the parties will be. But uh um that's good. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's a lot of food for 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 people there who are would would you would you start off investing this way? Would you would you wait until you've got a bit of sort of skin in the game and some other? Look, there, I have a lot of clients who who I show them this option, but then they're a little bit reluctant on going, you know, um, going that way. But And then I've had someone like who have come in and I've showed them this at the beginning. I'm, I'm sure I have. I think the first discussion was we'd find a uh, four-bedroom house on a, on a reasonable size block yeah. and then develop a another house at the back of the block. That was that the was original, original plan. Yeah, okay. And yeah. then... Dragon approached me with this one. It's like, well, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. It's perfect. Yeah. So why wouldn't you do this? Like the fear. Yeah. It, it's it, you know from from what I'm talking with past clients, it's it's actually the fear of oh having to deal with so many you know rooms and so many people where you don't have to. You've got the property manager to do everything for you. Yeah. There, there's actually no reason why you wouldn't. And, and what if you don't mind me asking, what's mm. the property manager charging as a percentage? No, uh, nine plus GST, nine percent plus GST. Nine, nine. So it's slightly yeah. Two yeah, percent more. Two percent more. You'd be yeah. paying sort of six, Big deal. six or seven up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the arbitrage on that increased cost versus the exactly. up, uptick in the rent would. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's worthwhile. Exactly. Um, exactly. Okay. 
do people have a bias to this sort of stuff? They go, I don't want that because my original point, most people's view towards rooming houses is that, you know, troublemakers. Because I, 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 I delivered pizzas in Blacktown for four years. So I've, <laughs> I've seen it all, right? <laughs> so so, so I, I remember specifically a uh -huh. number of different rooming houses where I used to deliver yep. pizzas to. Yep. And that's probably therefore shaped my view of rooming 100%. houses. Because either I was delivering pizzas there <clears throat> Or the cops were there, or the fire brigade was there, yeah. or there was an ambulance no, there. No, nothing right? like that. Yeah. So, like, so that's yeah, a, yeah. Th that's sort of you know yeah. wrongfully how I'm framing this. So this yeah. is a, a different paradigm yeah. around a bit. I, I think a lot of people would potentially have those same biases. They you would. Know, they would. That the yeah. challenge is change your bias. Like you, you know, yeah, I'm sort of thinking about it. Going, oh, I sort of get this. Let's yeah. say group house versus it. rooming house. Yeah, big yeah. difference. Big, but it's a big. You're probably better off having a rooming house because at least it's it's policed and controlled yeah. rather than a a share house, which is the liability of a, a, a single person on the lease, then you've got to add everyone else. Mm. It changes all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to have the same um, share bond. I mean, there's no, there's no. Sorry to interrupt. There, yeah. There's no, there's no bond. There's no, uh, yeah. you know, agreements to to that. It's a come in, go out. Could be there for two weeks, one month, and then they're gone. So yeah. that that uh, you know, the in and out of people is constant. Where this one, it's stable, it's set. You've got contracts. People pay a bond as well. Hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, under the same bond bond yep. board conditions. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so all you all the, all that's really been happening is that if you think shared house, but it's been structured correctly, so exactly. it's individualized. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Good. Well, I hope you can find more of it because I reckon a lot of people are going to go get me more. <laughs> when are you going to go next, Phil? What's you yeah you, you're saving up your dough to go again? Are you going to refinance and? I'm not looking at the next vehicle, so I'm thinking self managed super fund. Okay, and would you do another rooming house? Would you? Yeah. Either yeah rooming house or just to start with a basic house, mm -hmm. or maybe go back um even. Commercial. Okay. Commercial yep. and self-made yeah. super fund is a good way to go. Yeah. Okay. And you're, you're from Canberra, right? Yes. Well, thanks for coming up. You're welcome. How long did it take you? Uh, it's two and a half hours. Two and a half. It's pretty easy, isn't but it? But then you get lost in Sydney like most Canberrans do. Yeah. Yeah. Is that those new roads made of the impact yet in and out of Sydney that, that they've done? Um, yeah, you can get onto that new tunnels and stuff. You should be able to get onto the M5. That's, that's pretty really quick trip. Yeah. yeah. It's faster than getting to South East Queensland, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I bet you it is. Uh, okay. That's well, a 13 hour drive up. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, informative. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming in, Phil, sharing that. Dragon, thanks, Phil. Um, yeah, really good. Um, yeah, I make the point again, this is not all that you guys do. That's but, right. But um, um, I, I can see why, why, you know, certain investors would, would be interested and resonate with this, not yeah. only. You know, um, uh, the risk well, there's risk with everything, but mitigating sort of uh, cash flow challenges around three instead of one tenants, you've got it managed correctly, which is a, a good way to do that. Uh, yes, there's, you know, more costs to get in, but you probably, because you've got to buy furniture and all that, but mm -hmm. you get the upsides um, uh, into the future. Uh, and also you're probably going to get better yields by doing this. So I guess Definitely. you just need to look at both sides of that balance sheet and weigh it up and see whether yep. it's right for you. Yep. That's probably what you do with your clients. Definitely do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. How do people find you, mate? What's the best uh, way? The buyers agency Australia.com.au or actually they can just uh, SMS us on 0405-105074. Just mention that uh, Smart Property Investment Show yeah. and uh, we're happy to take do a 45-minute strategy session with them when they're ready. Okay. Yeah. All right. And everyone's going to be asking about this, but hopefully I've answered most of everyone's questions. Uh, probably not a lot are left, left on the table there. Is there anything I missed? Is that all? That's pretty much, pretty much for this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. All right. Well, th thanks for that. And, you know, we, we sort of write about this stuff. We'll do more of it on, on smartprotinvestment.com. You go and uh, check it out. You can find us on social media also, smartprotinhq. Uh, that's it from me today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.